Have you guys ever gotten so bored that you actually start doing stuff? Not me. Personally, that's just not me. I don't even have time to be bored. <laughs> Wish I did, but yeah. For those of you guys who actually want to do something when you're bored, active boredomers, active boredomers, per se, this one's for you. Of course, if you've seen Mariah Elizabeth's videos, you're already full of ideas of things to do at home when you're bored. But if you have just a little bit of space left in your very busy schedule of being actively bored, then I hope you'll consider some of my spectacularly, slightly evil ideas. They're meant to be easy and fun and simple. I don't think anyone really wants to do complicated things when they're bored. Like those crazy intricate adult coloring books or 10 billion piece puzzles. Mild anxiety. That is not my idea of fun. Here on the dark side, we have very limited energy reserves. Mild anxiety. Especially when boredom strikes. So the first thing I did was grab this mirror that I definitely just had laying around and definitely didn't go out and buy just for this video. There's my camera. Hi there. And that's me. Is that a double chin? No, no it can't be. Say it ain't so. so. It's a very simple mirror. There's no border or anything, but it does have some fingerprints. My fingerprints. I'll have to wipe that down later. Oh, and that's my cursed duck squishmallow. Not trying to brag or anything, but I got it for five bucks at five below. I love five below. All right, back to me. I'm gonna be adding a funky border around this mirror with polymer clay. I picked up some fluorescent green glow-in-the-dark Fimo clay. I got this green one since I think green's a pretty evil color. It's a safe bet and it's a safe bet kind of day. It doesn't claim to be glow-in-the-dark, but it says effect. And I'm guessing that's what that means because I don't know what else it could mean. I'll keep you guys updated on whether it glows or not. I got three of these, but I actually didn't end up needing that much. I'd rather have more than I need so I don't have to run back to the store. Not that I did. These are just things that I always have laying around, as I'm sure many of you do too. I then conditioned the clay. This was painful. My hands are too delicate for this. <laughs> I did this whole process three times. Triple the torture. Yay. Replace boredom with pain. So if you like to inflict pain on yourself when you're bored, this one's the craft for you. I'm mostly kidding. It's actually a really simple DIY. I'm gonna trace the mirror onto parchment paper. This is basically gonna act as a guide for me when I'm working with my clay. I basically rolled together a snake of clay and laid it down in a funky swirly pattern around my circle outline. I'm not being super precise. I used a couple snakes to complete the circle flower. Once it started looking presentable, I shoved it in the oven for 15 minutes. All right, so the mirror's coming back. I had to wipe that down. I sized it up against the mirror, a perfect fit. I added some glue onto the back and then carefully plopped it onto the mirror. I just have to let it dry now. Reminds me of SpongeBob for some reason. I love how funky it looks and it was really easy to do. Two pluses for curing boredom. So I know what you're all not wondering. Does, Does it glow? glow? Eh, kind of. It's a faint glow. I'm used to disappointments at this point. I'm not even phased anymore. All right, moving on. So for my next thing to do when you're bored, I have this wooden tray thing. I have all this stuff just laying around. I don't think I need to sand it. It already has enough texture on it, so I'm just skipping that step this time and jumping straight into painting. I pulled out my black multi-surface paint. I don't think I necessarily need multi-surface paint. Any paint will do. This is just what I have on hand, genuinely. I'm painting it mostly black. I wanted to give it a very evil feel, just trying to make it worthy of the dark side. I then mixed up a nice, bright, evil lime green. It's supposed to be similar to the green I used for the mirror, trying to keep things at least a little cohesive. I'm painting the inside with this pop of color. I wanted to give it like a cauldron-like feel. Next, I need some rocks. I picked up these super shiny, polished, ultra glossy ones in my backyard. There's a ton of them. They were just so pretty, so I just couldn't stop picking them. But I'm only gonna need a few today. After closely examining them, I picked out the best nine. I layered on some Mod Podge just to ensure the paint will stick to the rocks. This first one's gonna be a checkered pattern. I tried to keep the pattern somewhat evil, or at least patterns that give me some dark side vibes. This one's very creepy cute. It's like yin-yang ghosts. 
I made an abstract looking one too. There's like drips at the bottom and then there's stitches that are coming undone at the seams and also a patch. It reminds me of a voodoo doll, especially the stitches and the patch. Next up is a swirl. I thought I'd have more trouble painting on such a tiny surface, but it actually wasn't so bad. Maybe the fact that it's a pretty flat surface helped. This one I actually completely blacked out and then painted on some pinstripes. It's based on Jack Skellington, as you guys probably already guessed. There's a lot more Jack Skellington to come later in this video, but before that, here's an alternative version of Smelly. You guys might remember Smelly from my last Squishy makeover. He's the double-chinned, bloated, wrinkly pink bear that smells like turds with sprinkles. With the characters, I'm painting them all in shades of green, hence why Smelly couldn't be pink today, but that's okay. Hopefully this guy looks a little familiar. He's an evil mastermind, such as myself, so I had to include him. It's supposed to be Plankton, in case that isn't immediately obvious. This unibrowed freak isn't actually someone I've made before. It's really just some random face of some random guy. Can't say I know him. I just like giving characters unibrows. It's charming in a sort of ugly sort of way. You can tell things are getting serious when I pull out the measuring tape. I just mapped out where I want my lines to be, and then I stuffed an acrylic paint set into the box. It fits perfectly. So satisfying. Just like a puzzle piece. Just kidding. I don't want to think about puzzles right now. I'm bored, not crazy. I didn't have like a small ruler or anything, and this paint set fits perfectly, so I'm using it to help me draw some straight lines. It's supposed to be a tic-tac-toe board. It's looking a little empty though, so I'm adding some bubbles. Now it looks like a bubbling cauldron. Kinda. The rocks are basically just gonna be game pieces for tic-tac-toe. I took this thing back outside where I originally found the rocks and sprayed everything down with some glossy varnish. This isn't a board game. It's a bore dumb game. <laughs> Bruh. Okay, onwards we move. For my last thing to do when you're bored, I pulled out some epoxy, which was actually a mistake. Don't pull out the epoxy. Never pull out the epoxy. I'm just kidding. I love epoxy. Just not for this. I should have tested this off camera. I basically took some mold that I liked. Who doesn't have mold lying around their place? These are Nightmare Before Christmas themed. Very creepy cute stuff. Totally my vibe. They were sent to me from Sophie and Toffee in this beautifully beautiful box. There's so much stuff packed into here. There's molds, there's stickers, there's charms, there's glitter. There was resin that I already used all of, which is why we're doing this. I basically stuffed these super nice Disney licensed molds. Disney licensed molds with epoxy into them instead of resin, which is what they're meant for. The epoxy wasn't really working out. It was just sticking too much to the mold. So I ended up just cleaning it all out. Luckily, I've got options. I switched over to polymer clay, which worked a whole lot better. It just popped right out of the mold, which is exactly what I wanted. I stuck it in the oven. I'm gonna be baking it for 15 minutes. Once that was done, I sanded the edges down. Honestly, you don't even have to sand it if you don't want to. Depends on how bored you are. I then painted all these tiny figurines, which was a little difficult since I had to try and be super careful while painting all these little minute details. You guys are probably already starting to get bored, so I'll just fast forward to when I have them done. And there you have it. I've successfully made you bored. So now do go and give one of these a try and let me know if it works. Bored? If you're bored, I've got just the thing for you. Click on the video right next to me. That'll do it. Yeah.